Hello, so, Warden's Rune Poem. So, depending on what copy of the Havamar you have, will depend on where it begins. On this copy I'm reading from, from the Mask of Odin book, it uh, begins at 137 in the Havamar. So, it begins like this. I know that I hung in the wind-torn tree, nine whole nights, spear-pierced, Sacrificed to Odin, myself, to myself, above me in the tree, whose roots no one knows where they grow. None brought to me bread, none served me mead. I searched the depths, spied runes of wisdom, raised them with song, and fell once more thence. Nine powerful chants I learned from the wise son Boltorn, Bastal's father. A drought I drank of purest, of precious mead. A drought I drank of precious mead, ladded from Oderier. Oderier translates to life force energy. So that means the drink of mead he was given was a gift of life force energy. So I began to thrive, to grow wise, to grow greater and enjoy. For me, words led from the words to new words. For me, deeds led from deeds to new deeds. So you see, after he has the drink of life for his energy, he is beginning to thrive. He is growing wise and greater and enjoying his life and all that, right? So, continuing on. Ruins shall you know and rightly read staves, very great staves, powerful staves, drawn by the mighty one who speaks, Made by the wise Vana, carved by the highest rulers. Odin among the Asir, Divalin among the elves, and Divalin means sleeper, so that means he is known as sleeper among the elves. Danin among the dwarves, Danin means dead, so he's known as the dead among the dwarves. And then Alfitar among the giants. And that means all-knowing. Alfitar means all-knowing. So he is all-knowing to the giants. I myself have also carved some. Know you how to write? Know you how to interpret? Know you how to understand? Know you how to test? Know you how to prayer? Know you how to sacrifice? Know you how to transmit? Know you how to atone? Better not to pray than to sacrifice in excess. Gift always tends to return. Better sent not than waste too much. Thus wrote Thund. Thund is the cycle of life. Thus wrote Thund, the cycle of life, for the passage of years where he arose, where he came again. So he's talking about how life is a cycle. You arose and then you came again, right? And he's saying that you know, it's good to pray and sacrifice, but don't overdo it. Don't sacrifice all your things that you need in this life. Because, you know, it's not too good to overdo it. So, I know songs unknown to the wife of the king or to any son of man. Aid is one, and it can help you in sadness, sorrow, and difficulty, and trouble. So, he's talking about the one song that he knows, the spell song. Whenever he talks about the song, he's talking about like a spell, okay? And yeah, so it it helps you with your depression, your sadness. And then a second I know that should be known by those who would be healers. So this one is about healing, physical healing the body and healing yourself. A third I know, if need be, that can fetter any foe. I can dull their blades so that sword or decent cannot harm. So what he's saying is this is a spell for physical protection. A fourth, I know if warriors place links of chain on my limbs, I can sing a charm that will make me free. Fetters fall from my feet and the hasps from my hands. So he's saying that he has a spell that he can escape chains and things like that. If he is ever chained up, he can escape it by singing a ruin song. 
A fifth I know, if I see hurled arrows hard at my hoard. Thou, though rapid their fight, I arrest them in air if I see them clearly. So he is saying that uh, basically he is able to stop the arrows as long as he can see them coming, right? So, and then a sixth song I sing if man does me harm with the roots of wild weeds or a hell man hates me, he brings harm to himself, not to me. So what this is about is saying that he can reverse curses. So somebody is trying to put a curse upon him. He knows a ruin song where he can reverse that curse so it does not harm him, but it harms the person giving the curse. The seventh I sing, if a fearsome fire flames in the hall where the warriors sit. So he's talking about Valhalla, if a fire ever happened in Valhalla. So broad burns he cannot, that I cannot quench him. This charm is one I can chant. So what he's talking about, he knows a charm where if somebody sets fire to Valhalla, he is able to chant a charm of the ruins and it will save the people inside from the fire and put the fire out. The eighth I sing is for everyone, the most fortunate lore he can learn. When hatred is harborned by children of chiefs, this I can hastily heal. So what he's saying is here is he can heal the hate within people. He has a ruined chant that he knows where he can heal the hatred in someone's heart. The ninth that I know, if need there should be to save my boat on the billow, the wind I can lay to rest on the waves and still the stormiest sea. So what he's saying is he controls the wind. He can control the wind and make the sea calm. A tenth I am able when witches do ride, but it doesn't actually mean witches. What it means is the wives of a troll, the wife of a troll, troll wives. So a tenth I am able when a troll wives do ride high aloft in the air. I can lead them astray out of their forms, out of their minds. So what he's saying is if a bunch of troll wives are coming out, you know, to attack, he knows a ruin spell where he can make them kind of go crazy and become lost and lose their minds. Eleventh, I can, if forth into war, old friends into battle I lead. I sing below shields so they draw with force. Hole into the fight, hole out of the fight, and hole whose ever they go, wherever they go. So basically he's saying he knows another spell where he can choose to protect the warriors. He can make them go in and out of the battle and wherever they go be unharmed. So he can keep them safe if he chooses to by singing a certain ruling poem. Twelfth, I am able if I see a tree with a hanged man hung high. I can carve and draw runes so that his hanged body will speak to me. So what he's doing is he, he knows runes that can make the dead speak. Thirteenth, I know if they wish me to sluice with water a citizen's son, he shall not fall, though outnumbered, though outnumbered he be, he shall not fall by any sword. So what he's saying is, what he does is he sprinkles water blessings for protection on a warrior and then he will not be harmed, which is also where the Catholics got the whole idea of sprinkling holy water on people that is from us, from paganism, is from Woden, just like how the name God comes from the name Gwoden. It was originally Odin, All Father's name. You know, God looks down from you from the heaven in Christianity, while All Father Woden looks down from you from the heavens in paganism. So... Almost everything to do with Christianity is just a rip-off of paganism. Anyway, 14. I can name the warriors' horde, the names of beneficent gods, the seer and elves. I can all distinguish, as an unwise man cannot. So what he is saying is most people do not know the difference between elves and the seer, the gods, but he knows the difference. 
because you see elves are basically like the same as the gods, right? It is a human soul that has had many, many lives and has enlightened itself, I guess you could say, and become like the gods and no longer needs to reincarnate on earth. So when you see an elf, it is like seeing a god. But uh, All Father Woden was a spell and he can tell the difference between the gods and the elves. 15. I know what the setter in motion sang at the doors of dawn. He sang power to the Asir, progress to the elves, mind force to the god of the gods. So a dwarf song, which was about giving power to the gods and courage for the elves and all that kind of thing. It's kind of straightforward in that one, but most people do not understand it is a dwarf who sang this song. So 16. I can chant, if I desire, the wise maid's joy and favor. A white-armed woman's love I can win and turn her mind to me. So he's saying he knows also ruin chants for a love spell. 17. I sing that not soon many be parted from me the beloved maid. For a long, long time shall you, Lodorferna, be lacking these days, or be lacking these lays. If we're, if we're good that you keep them concealed, you are fortunate to learn them. It were, if it were useful to heal them well, to heed them well. So he's talking about again the love spell and he's saying it's profitable to learn them and, but it is only to be used for good. If you do not use it for good, then it will backfire on you is what he is saying. 18. I sing as I never have sung to a maid, to, to a maid or to any man's mate. All that is best is known only to one. She who embraced me as a sister. This is the end of the song. So what he is saying here is he will never teach it to just any woman, this, these certain ruined poems, only to his wife or his sister. It is best kept a secret otherwise. And then at the end it says, Now is sung the high one's song in the high one's hall, useful to children of men, useless to sons of giants. Hail him who sang, hail him who knows, happy is he who receives it. And that is the end of the Havamar. And that is the end of the, well, Warden's Ruin Poem. So I just thought I would read it and explain a little bit that people get confused with because it is written in, you know, Old Norse and then it's translated into Old Style English. So the words are kind of confusing and some of the words are not translated like names and then people don't understand what it is talking about. So I hope you could understand a little bit better about Odin's womb poem. Tschüss!